second big psychiatric condition that's being treated with deep brain stimulation now is obsessive compulsive disorder. This isn't as common as depression, but can be equally as devastating for the person affected and their family. Uh, these patients have recurrent obsessions and compulsions. Um, this condition often manifests during adolescence uh, or even childhood, and it can often get worse with time. <coughs> Fortunately, 90% of these patients can be treated with psychological strategies and pharmacological therapies, and so most of them don't actually need to uh, uh, be considered for, for surgery. OCD does have a fairly uh, good base of literature uh, when it comes to surgical treatment and most of those studies have been done with lesioning, either open lesioning um, uh, surgically uh, or with um, stereotactic radiosurgery such as the gamma knife. And if you look at the results there, I've just listed, summarised really the response rate. The thing to, to note on that slide is that the response rate does vary uh, quite a lot. And it's not particularly great, but it's, it's, not, it's not too bad. But when deep brain stimulation uh, became accepted for other um, conditions, it was uh, logical to look at applying it to uh, the treatment of OCD. Again, like depression, you're looking at multiple targets that can be selected on the basis of our knowledge of the pathophysiology of OCD, on the basis of functional neuroimaging studies, and on the basis of response of obsessive compulsive disorder trays and uh, signs uh, to stimulation for other conditions, such as patients with Parkinson's disease might have had STN stimulation and their OCD features got better, so people started looking at the subthalamic nucleus. So again, the response rate there when you look at the, um, the literature does vary, uh, but you're probably looking at around about 50 to 60% of patients responding. We've done three OCD patients. Uh, um, uh, we've done a lot of patients with Tourette syndrome that have also had some OCD features, but we've done three patients primarily for the treatment of OCD. One of them was done last week, so we don't have much follow-up on that yet. But the two patients that we do have follow up on. Um, one patient had significant Tourette syndrome and OCD and we decided to put electrodes in the bed nucleus of Stria terminalis as well as the globus pallidus internus with the rationale being the GPI was the target for the Tourette syndrome and the BNST was the target for the OCD. Uh, she has obtained a significant benefit particularly when at home but unfortunately when she goes out in public her tics come back. So she's, a, uh, she's got a partial benefit. Uh, her OCD symptoms are not as pervasive or as repetitive as they were before, but the great thing for her is that she's been able to substantially reduce her medication intake. The second uh, patient also had an improvement in her level of functioning and a reduction in the uh, number and frequency of uh, distressing uh, thoughts. So we're still going through those, trying to quantify uh, things for those patients. Thank you.